In this video, we're going to create a push button. When you click on this push button, it will play a sound, which you already know how to do. But the new thing is that when you push it, it will change the image so it looks like it's been pushed. So the first thing that we've done is made sure to include the sound effect inside our sounds folder using the .snd extension. And we're just using that clown honking sound that we used in the previous app. The key to this one, though, is what you're going to place into the images folder. You'll notice inside of my images folder, I have two buttons that look exactly the same, except one has a center of blue and one has a center of red. This button here will be the image that you see when you're not clicking. And this button here will be the image you see as you're clicking the button. Take a look at the two names image underscore button one, image underscore button two. It's extremely important that you label the two images exactly the same. The first button, the one you want to see on your screen at all times, with the number one, and the second button, the one that you want to see only when you're pushing it, with the number two. Note that there are no spaces. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're going to open up our app. So now we've got the program open. So the first thing we want to do is add the push button to our screen. So we're going to use a new API called push button add. Notice the capital on the P, the B, and the A. And we want to tell it where to find the images of the buttons that we want to use. So bracket quotation mark images flash image underscore button. Now here's where you have to be careful. In our assets folder under images, we have image underscore button one, which tells that this is what you want to display when nothing's happening. And image underscore button two, this is the image you want to show when the button is being pushed. But in our code, we don't use the number one or the number two. The app understands that what to do with it. So we just write image underscore button and it knows what to do. Comma. Now we need to tell it where to locate it on the screen, the X and the Y coordinates. So we'll put in zero, comma, zero, comma. And we need to tell it what do you want it to do other than change the images, which this tells it to do. What else do you want it to do? So we want it to play a sound. So we're going to put that inside of a mini program called Play comma, zero, um, which tells it to return to what it was doing, semicolon. All right, now because we've used a mini program in here called click, we need to declare that program at the top. So we're going to introduce the program called click, and we'll have to put in introduce ID as well, just because of the formatting of push buttons and things like that. Now what do we want it to do? We want it to play a sound. So we'll use the API that we learned in the last video, sound play. And we need to tell it what sound to play. Well, we are going to store it inside of a variable. Because we know sound play only plays the sound that's already been stored. So we'll come down here into the app main. And we're going to load the sound into memory. And we know that's using sound add. And we tell it where that sound is stored. And it's in my sounds folder. So now we've loaded the sound.snd file into the memory. So in order to put it into sound play, we need to store it into a variable. So we'll call that variable sound effect. So now we can come up here and say play the sound stored inside of sound effect. And once it's played the sound, return to what it was doing before that. And end that program. Okay, now we used another variable, so we need to introduce that variable at the top. The variable we introduced was sound effect. So let's throw that in there. Okay, so let's take a look. Our app looks good, so we'll press F5. 
and see what happens. So we can see that our image with the blue center is there. Hopefully you can hear it um, when it plays. It played the sound, it changed the color. I'm still holding down the mouse. You can see that it is still displaying the secondary color. As soon as I let go, it turns back to blue. Great, so my app is working wonderfully. Now I can't wait to see what you do with the process of creating a push button.